Uh, dude, right. It's all good. That was a messy start. Messy, messy it's start. But <laughs> we're live. We're good. This is uh, this is what happens. You know, things things happen happen uh, for a reason. And for that, I am not sure what the reason was. But uh, let's just jump straight into it. Vince, how are you doing? I'm doing pretty good. It's a it's, good day in Seattle. Um, it's it's been a it's been a bright and well, I'll say bright but grey day for us over here. Um, right, I'm a little bit flustered on what's happening here, but let's uh, let's just make sure in the chat if we're all coming through loud and clear and uh, and all sort of good levels and everything. Um, and then one thing that I'm gonna do is uh, explain <laughs> what this whole live stream is. So I realised last week, uh, although it started off way more seamlessly. Um, I didn't really go into detail on what the the idea of the stream was, what Art and the Heart is, and what, you know, my uh, goal and vision is for all of this. Um, so, of course, it's starting off as a live stream, and uh, I'm wanting to introduce various guests and people in my network from all over the world who can share their passion for creativity and the art and the heart, something that I celebrate uh, quite a lot on people who make art for the right reasons. And uh, Vince, of course, you are one of those people. Uh, as well as a whole lineup of other people that I've got, um, and yeah, this is a, this is a stream that I I kind of want to celebrate that, but it's not limited to just streams. In the future, I maybe want to do um, uh, live events and other things, you know, in person when we can, and those types of things. But um, yeah, that's kind of the the premise of it. So the idea of a weekly stream is that we're going to have uh, about a forty five minute show. Given today that we've uh, had some delays when we started. Um, we'll go through about 30 minutes talking about some artwork and various bits of your creativity. Um, and then if you've got any questions in the audience, uh, we'll spend some time at the end, maybe about 10, 15 minutes or so going through those and, um, yeah, get everything all set up and good to go. So, uh, yeah, Vince, do you want to just explain a little bit about who you are and uh, what yeah. you're all about? Yeah, that's always, um, when people ask me that, I'm always like, oh, it could be like a long story or a short story, but, uh. Yeah, my name is Vince Perry, um, based in Seattle. Uh, do a lot of different types of photography and filmmaking. I feel like they both kind of marry up from like travel stuff to street stuff. Um, also like portraits and fashion, but then sometimes within all that kind of dive into honestly wherever I can put my camera and, and tell stories. Uh, you know, I, I have friends that are artists and stuff as well. So I've worked with art, artists quite a bit, um, music artists that is shot like music videos and stuff just because I have like the um the ability to do so and help tell those stories and stuff too as well help support other people um with my creativity and you know through all that I've been able to meet a ton of people just like around the world um Joe obviously himself and a lot of other people have like stepped in front of my lens and yeah it's it's always a really cool way to kind of explore the world, I guess, through the lens in that way, but then, you know, still try to have that balance of taking in those human to human interactions. But sometimes the camera is just like that entry point to, to start um, all of that. So yeah, that's a, that's a little bit about me. You, uh, you are just one of the most creatively visual people that I know, um, by the way, I just wanted to, to point that out. Uh, so you. you, you're so like, um, sort of people oriented and uh you know one thing that I, I think you maybe didn't touch on there when explaining about the stuff that you do is just how connected you are um across the world and <laughs> the way that the way that we met in itself um yeah. is quite a quite an interesting story uh so Vince you've been a viewer on the channel for years right yeah I think. I, yeah it's um I know for sure since 2017 early 2017 I'll probably say the top of the year so now it's been it's been four years, but I feel like before that, I may have stumbled across like a few of your videos, like maybe like late summer 2016. But then I finally saw like, I can't remember exactly what it was. It maybe been a video like in Japan, but there was like a few videos around where I was like, okay, I'm going to kind of like stick around and, and see what, see what this guy has going on. And it's, um, yeah, it's been an enjoyable ride as a viewer to kind of just see the growth of the channel, uh, see what you and Ellie have done like over the years. And it's always like super inspiring. I feel like you have laid the groundwork and kind of the template of like how to do, 
I guess YouTube like in your way. And what I've always enjoyed too is the ability to produce premium content, premium quality content, but just like do it, do it in your way and be like unapologetic about it. You know, even if there's times where you've put out a ton of videos within a certain period, or you've like taken a break and taken a step back. Um, Because like, I think you definitely see YouTube as a, something that's like a long-term vision over the long haul, something you're going to continue to do you know, regardless of, you know, whatever happens, like YouTube is kind of like the foundation um, or like a kind of home base for you to, to get into like a lot of the things, um, you know, that you enjoy, whether it's like in tech, photography, just some of the more like behind the scenes stuff, you know, as far as like setup and just kind of like just teaching. Now, I wouldn't say Mm -hmm. like you have like a bunch of like tutorial stuff, but you like teach in a way, like through your experience. And like, I've always like enjoyed that. I feel like every video that I've watched like I've always picked something up that you can do. I remember watching like a premiere, that rush video you did and oh, yeah? you were like cutting it up. Like I didn't even edit in premiere like at all or use rush, but I watched it. Cause I was just entered to see like what you had to talk about, but then you're like, you made references to like different type of cuts or like having the audio come in before you see the next clip. So your ears are kind of prepared to see, what's going on and that's kind of like something i've i've implemented and and what i'm doing and just using like different type of cuts and stuff so yeah it's it's been awesome to be like a viewer and then you know when you and ellie came out to seattle we finally met and then you know we've kind of like kept kept the friendship going it's like i think it's funny because you always mention seattle but then like i actually tried i tried to meet you when um you were in cologne we were both at photo in 2018. oh yeah of course yeah yeah i And this was like, it was, we didn't like chat or anything and I wasn't there like super long. So like, it was all good or any, or whatever. Mm -hmm. Like I didn't, I didn't take it any sort of way because I knew you were busy, but that was like, so ironic too, to be there like right at the same time, because when I did my two week trip to like Europe, it was like London, Paris, Bruges, Brussels, Cologne, and Berlin. I was originally going to go to, uh, instead of Berlin, I think I was going to go down to Frankfurt. But I was like, oh, let me just like spend a day in Cologne because I just wanted to hit another city. And then after um, like kind of setting the itinerary for Cologne, I was like, oh, okay, like photo keen is going down. Mm. Like this is like one of the biggest events like for photography, like this would be so cool to go. And um, yeah, I had a good time. I was only there for like a day, but it was cool to kind of be in that, be in that environment and stuff. Too. Yeah, definitely. So, yeah. Well, one thing um, about the whole sort of friendship and, and connectivity that I, I want to stress so much. And uh, Vince, you're someone who I mentioned to so many people when they're, they're saying like, oh, what channel should I go and watch on YouTube? And, you know, who should I go and follow? Like Vince, you come to mind straight away. Yeah, thank you. Um, but one of the things that you're so good about, and uh, I'm hoping we can touch on that in a moment, is the way that you network and the way that you connect with people. So the reason that we got to be friends uh, is the fact that you messaged and you yeah. just saw that um, you were enjoying the content and you just you've left comments multiple times. But as soon as that moment came that we were in Seattle and I remember posting a story saying like, "Hey, has anyone got any um, tips of like great places to go and areas to shoot and stuff?" You were one of the first to respond. Oh yeah, <laughs> um, just saying like, "Hey, come here. Uh, I'll show you around if you cool yeah. for that. Otherwise, if not, here's a list of things." <clears throat> yeah. um, and we met up and you know just yeah, hit it off good. immediately. Yeah, it um, was a good time. Yeah, and you are just online everywhere. The amount of times I see <laughs> images and videos and like top comment, Vince Perry, and yeah. uh, liked by Vince Perry, like you are just on it all the time. Yeah. Um, and the one thing that I want to talk about in uh, in your sort of work ethic on things, because um, I know that you, you still have a full-time job and yeah. you're doing a lot of this on the side. And I really relate back to how I was when I was starting my YouTube channel and, and growing things because... I did uh, for a long time have it as kind of like a, a main sort of side hustle and it was like a, a separate thing just sort of happening. And um, right. I I eventually took the plunge and it was one of those things where I, I put a lot of spreadsheets together on finances and other stuff and like how long can I last, how many months yeah. and in that time can I, you know, cut it, can I make it with the the channel and other things I was doing online. But for you, uh, I feel like you're potentially at that tipping point yeah soon you're kind of weighing up a lot of stuff and you're putting a lot of hours and and effort in um but in terms of your work ethic you are you are just on it you are 
making so much work um and i i always think back to the london project which you've published recently can you just talk a little bit about that because i know it's not necessarily recent work but it was great work yeah i mean it's kind of recent in terms of like when i published it or like when the last video went up i think um the last video went up sometime in december but I think what a lot of people don't even actually know unless they've done some digging around or listened to talks that I've been on or podcasts or whatever, like this was all in August of 2019 over the span of seven, yeah, seven days. It was really like six and a half, but my last morning I spent out shooting and it actually caused me to miss my flight. (laughs) But that's like how dedicated I was to just being out there to shoot. And um, I didn't go out there with the intention of, okay, I'm going to shoot this project. I just went out there with the intention of, I want to go out and shoot. I enjoy London. I've been there in 2018. It was a good time. And I didn't know it was going to turn into basically everything that it became as far as the project and in my experience. So yeah, I just basically went out there to shoot as much as I can, try to network with people, meet up with new people, meet up with old friends as well. And um, yeah, I just, I basically just booked a flight. I felt like everything that I shot out there from um, portraits and fashion stuff to even just some of the street stuff that I did or travel stuff rather, it was like, um, I just like, I just dove in. I felt like everything that I did was what I wanted to do in Seattle, but I felt like for some reason, like I couldn't because there was just like a lot going on at the Mm -hmm. time. Because like you mentioned, like I do work full time and previously, like I was at a job where it was really just draining my energy from just like my personal life and my creative. And it was like having me on a very, very limited time. So London, I saw it as a way to kind of break free from that. And like shortly after I come back from that trip, it was like maybe two months later, I actually ended up leaving my job and I was kind of freelancing around for a little yep. bit, but I've started working back again. Um in March of last year. So it's almost been a year back working full time. So yeah, so I I take the impression that you're a bit of a yes man. So when when projects kind of come their way or opportunities, you so often it seems anyway, um, are happy to just say yes. And as you say, just like dive straight in, you know, you book a flight and you're in London for like a week. And I think you ended up publishing like 17 videos or something ridiculous from that (laughs) 21 videos in a week that is outstanding that is absolutely incredible um and like i mean just the amount of content generation in that time is incredible but the quality of it as well is is really saying something Um, and also i can imagine the um the development for you of like progressing fast and you know learning fast on your things 100 percent would you would you agree that you're a yes man and would you would you say that that benefits you or does it ever hinder you on saying yes to too many things so yeah i think (laughs) i'm a yes man in terms of jumping on new opportunity but not a yes man in terms of when it comes to situations where i have to give feedback (laughs) but uh or things like that but that's besides the point so yeah i would say 100 percent it hinders me um literally this past saturday I wanted to, I've been wanting to film a Q and A and for a couple months now, but I had it in my mind how I wanted to do it. I didn't want to just sit down at my desk. I wanted to be in Seattle going around to all these different places that I enjoy and showing me the, in the environment that I'm in. And I think that's just super important for like my type of aesthetic or what I want to bring as far as my production, like on YouTube, but going out, the original goal was to film that Q and A, <clears throat> but one of my friends that excuse me that helped me film like we we, he he takes photos too as well and then we have like another friend that's always down to for an adventure so basically what we did was we filmed a q a we shot a kodak disposable challenge video and then i filmed like a freestyle video of my friend like when we were just like out at one of the parks so essentially did three things in one day and two of the other things outside of the q a were things I just came up with the night before. <clears throat> yeah. Excuse me. So you're just so, working on the the sort of last minute idea of things. Yeah. But so I, the gut feeling almost. Yeah. I think it was like, I always just try to maximize the time because I was like, okay, when am I going to get another full day like this to mm-hmm. knock all this stuff out? Because like I have to work too. It's a lot easier to, for me to just sit back and edit. And with all the London stuff, because I'd shot it so long ago, 
basically from August of last year to December, like I wasn't really filming any videos. Mm -hmm. So I, I think I just improved as an editor, just got more understanding of flow and just all of that, just kind of like being able to just get in the wheelhouse and really get to work. But yeah, for example, like Saturday is like one of those things where I'm like always trying to do too much. And I think sometimes I have a tendency to like overbook myself or even kind of like stress my own self out because of mm -hmm. like how much I take on. Like, yep. um, yes, I mean, just even yesterday too, I was filling out like a, or I was finishing filling out like a questionnaire for uh, an editorial feature that I'm going to have um, next, yeah, next month for uh, a magazine. And I, I had to provide some images but then basically, yeah, I had committed to that. I wanted to do that. But then I had like other things going on too as well. Like I'm working on a video, like my brother is about to come in town. Like it's like all these things I feel like is always going on like all the time. Yeah. And um, like that with that too, I'm going down to LA to, to shoot a cover. So like part of that feature, that's like an extension of that. But then like in the back of my mind, I'm thinking about what I have to do in like the next two mm -hmm. weeks, you know? So but it's even, like always going. Even in the content itself, it's, it's so... Uh, like it's very much you're doing a lot of things but the content itself is photography and filmmaking and I know firsthand how difficult that is to make videos about photography for one thing you've got two mindsets for your camera work and um, two sort of narratives like you're you're telling the behind the scenes but then you're also focusing on capturing a good uh, image and outcome at the end of it how do you how do you balance like the the amount of work you're doing on top of the fact that the work itself is a huge amount <laughs> you know, I don't even know, <laughs> just like do it. I don't even really think about it. Sometimes I just like, just go, just literally just go, go, go. Because like I, I, I mentioned previously, like in London, literally that last morning, like I went and did a shoot and that was like so stupid because like I missed my flight, but I was just like, oh, it's like another opportunity to just go. But yeah, I don't know. It's like, yeah, a breakdown of photography, it's filmmaking, I think when it comes to producing videos, because I think the video aspect is the glue for, you know, what you're trying to tell, like you may be showing the, excuse me, you may be showing the photos, but that is just the glue to, to, to bring the photos to like, I guess, a viewing experience in terms of of YouTube and the balance. Like, I don't really know. I feel like I don't really think about it as much. You know, I feel like when I came into doing photography and, and filmmaking, like studying video, I think I probably spent like six months studying on my own before I even actually took up the reins to do it back in 2016. But I started shooting photos and putting that out. So I don't know. I just do it. I try not to think about it. I don't I feel like I'm not much of a complainer. That's yeah. why I think that's another reason why I just go hard and do what I need to do, because like the more you think about it, the more you try to analyze it, you'll get like what I call analysis paralysis. And then you won't do anything at all. So it's like, sometimes, like with the London stuff, I didn't really, like I said, I didn't know exactly how it was going to come about. I just basically went and filmed. I remember the day that we met up when we had Shake Shack, I think that was the same day where I was like, you know, I didn't even film any part of me today talking. Yeah. And I was just like, I was just so dead. Like I was running from shoot to shoot. My first call time Getting was the like wrong at, trains here, there and everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. That's a thing in itself. <clears throat> um, my, like my first call time, I think was like at 6 30 AM and it was at Barbican. And then like, I had another one there too, as well. And they were back to back. And then I went from like central, yeah. Central London to like West London. That was like in Chelsea. And then I went from Chelsea over to Hackney. And then basically from 6 a.m. to like 2 p.m., like I was just like nonstop going. And then I finally mm -hmm. had a chance to sit down to eat. But yeah, I just try to take it in as much as I can. I feel like, yeah, there are different mindsets as far as how you approach video and, and photography, like, you know, the, maybe the settings and stuff that you use. But the basis of I feel like composition is like very similar. Mm. Um, especially like if you're being taken like a static shot where you're not really moving about too much. So it's just about, I feel like just getting that nice framing. I mean, if you have like a vlogging concept behind it too, then it's like, okay, that skill of narration, 
can you actually tell a story? Can you bring something along? Um, you know, are you good at basically communicating that? And what I've always enjoyed about what you've done is you've always been able to go out and capture what you needed to capture that day. And you talk about it and you narrate it throughout the day, although it may be over a spread of, you know, maybe 10 to 12 hours that you're out. You've always done a good job of that. And I've always admired that. And I've tried to do similar things. That's uh, even with the London stuff, like I didn't want to put the video stuff out and then be at my desk. Mm. Like I felt like that wouldn't fit. Like I was like, this is not the one for that. This is something totally different. Like if there's another video I've done where I need to provide more information, maybe I'll take a sit down at my desk and I can talk about it. But I'd much rather be out on location, take that extra five minutes or time to say, hey, this is what's going on. This is what I'm experiencing. This is what I'm seeing. And another thing I like too, is like, okay, we know the basis and the foundation is like a photo vlog, but I feel like every time that I've watched one of your videos, I've always felt transported to the location that I'm in. And I always liked that because then it was like, as much as, you know, you've been in Japan, I feel like I'm right there too, as well. <laughs> like, like, okay, I've seen these streets or like, okay, this is like, I'm, I'm you know, just familiar with things. And then you're talking about the area the food, you know, some of the people really taking us through an experience. And it's just like, okay, I'm here experiencing this and I'm making these photos, but just like on a human level, like this is just what I'm, what I'm, you know, just, exp yeah, experiencing. Like I'm just here, like boots on the ground type of deal. And I like, I've always appreciated that because it was just like more. And I felt like the photos are just like a result of the experience. Mm. I felt like you weren't really stressing too much about Oh, like well, I the, have there to, is there is yeah. stress on the back yeah. end. So there's <laughs> so many abandoned videos and all yeah, sorts. Yeah. But yeah. um yeah, definitely a definitely a human level. And that's something that I, I noticed in, in your work actually is you like you're such a personable person. Like you're you're so yeah. engrossed in community and um people's connectivity and connecting with people. Um I can just see it in the way that you interact with other people, in the way that you capture images and you know, you yeah. are doing a lot of portraiture and, and other things. Um, but I know you've also dabbled in like street and travel and more urban yeah. stuff in terms of your photography direction. Do you, do you have a particular area that you find yourself drawn to more? Are you drawn to people as much as it appears to be? <laughs> That's a good question. That's a very good question. I think when I have a camera in my hand, I really am. Um, it's funny because like, I consider myself an introverted extrovert. Like I very much love my alone time, love recharging, like at home, just having like a slower bit of time. But I think because I'm always trying to document my experiences, like the street and the travel stuff is a part of that. Like outside of seeing like portraits and stuff, maybe that have a little bit more direction. The street and the travel stuff is like, okay, this is like the environment I'm in. Like, let me transport you to this too as well like maybe i took pictures of people in this area but let me take photos of the area as well um <clears throat> i think i've always have done more portrait work i've always had a huge ad admiration and love for like street and travel which is why i've enjoyed what you've done so much but i don't think i've taken the same approach as far as like okay i need to get out and do these things i need to kind of put it on my calendar and say hey i'm gonna go out and shoot um, this day, I'm going to go walk around this day. But I think part of it is just, I think it's just like routine, like being at working my job, just like limited time and like having discipline about it to just do more of those things. Mm -hmm. Um, I'd say like in the last two weeks, it's been like an uptick for me. Uh, like I filmed like a few videos, like being out shooting, <clears throat> excuse me, one that I'm working on right now. And, um, Yeah. Your uh, your most recent uh, video, actually, it's not your most recent one, but your um, shooting photos from home, uh, it really hit hard for me because it's, it's one area that I struggle with a lot of uh, shooting in your home location, especially in this last year. I've been nothing but at home. Um, yeah. And travel, I know, is, is a huge escape for me personally, but also creatively. You yourself are also an avid traveler. Um, the amount of times we're chatting and you're just like dreaming up destinations of, yeah, I could spend a week here. I could uh, travel here for a, a week and get in 30 odd shoots or something crazy. Yeah. Um, 
But also, just in your background itself, you grew up in Florida, right? And then yeah. Salt Lake City, and then Seattle. Um, yeah. You you are seemingly on the move a lot of the times. Uh, and do you think that is a a sort of fuel for your creativity? Yeah, one hundred percent. Immersing myself into new environments and new experiences is what I love. Like, just think about when we get new things or like the honeymoon phase of things, like even though we know that it may not last, like it always feels good to experience that. But I think mm. when you do travel and you're not in that environment a lot, it doesn't become mundane. So you can continue to experience that. I think, yeah, just like with London, it's like, okay, you live there, you're there every day. So to you, it's just like, it's just normal. And the same thing too, like when you guys came to Seattle, I mean, I'd only been in Seattle for maybe like eight months or something at the time but it was like mm. okay well i had already been here like long enough to where like i don't know things it was just yeah it was just yeah. like it was just comfortable it was routine um yeah so i mean i'm kind of accustomed to to moving around a lot uh just how my family was and everything um yeah growing up in florida but then i've like i lived in the like i was born in florida and then i moved to like the bay area and then then we moved to Chicago and then we moved back to Florida. And then once I finished school and everything, it was Salt Lake City. But then I was only there for a couple of years. Then I've been wanting to get out to Seattle. And now I'm thinking about possibly going to New York next year. And I think that'll be the next move. But huge step. Yeah. Yeah. It's just like one thing, too, is I want to take advantage of the like the freedom I have with my job to like do that. Mm. And, yeah, that is a, a massive level up and um, using location as almost like a, a portfolio asset you can yeah. build up all of this work and images in your area and move to another area and yeah in, in some ways rinse and repeat um, yeah. but with a level up along the way yeah i think so um i think even too just like experience like living somewhere like i i would love to live out of the country one day i wish it was a lot easier like after mm. you know i've obviously i think i've thought of i think it's obvious that i've probably thought about living in london like it, i've thought about Berlin like that would be so cool I don't know I'm just like into just experiencing new things because it's 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 such an interesting feeling when you go mm. somewhere and you're the one that's the outsider you're the one that's the you know the foreigner and in a lot of ways you kind of I don't want to say it's not the exact same thing but like when people come to America too it's like you know, it's kind of the same thing, whether, you know, they're moving here. It's like, okay, this is maybe that's some of the type of things that they experience. So I think traveling and building that appreciation for different cultures and different people, yeah, you definitely. know, creates that understanding, especially when you don't speak the same language. Yeah. Just, um, being, being that outside or having that outside perspective is so valuable, um, as a way to go in and, and to learn about other cultures, but also to, to bring a bit of external culture um that's always you know great fun and meeting with people and uh going and arranging shoots with stuff and just connecting and, and bridging together people um one thing that uh just to kind of you know change topic and meander slightly differently uh, one thing i do want to talk about is the way that you've bridged together analog and digital uh work so you may um you may appear to be mostly shooting analog but i know that you're you're kind of agnostic uh, yeah, to digital and to analog um, 100%. where where do you feel yourself sitting now uh you know if you're to pick up a camera what are you going to go for i think right now I, i'd definitely pick up um one of my film cameras i mean i'd probably pick up my rz67 my mamiya <laughs> yeah right there and then next to that is my uh, contact i knew it was coming <laughs> so those are basically the main two i have my first analog camera was a1 program um but then previously digital i shot on the mark IV for like a long while and then now uh getting into fuji with the xt3 like i think because i've shot so much film over the last two years i'm basically having to kind of like rework okay how do i work with you know raw files again digital files again like how do I achieve, uh, you know, the look that I want and those the snow photos that were up there earlier of um, like Seattle at night, those I shot those on my X-T3 and I'm, I'm really happy with how I ended up uh, grading them, you know, doing the color and everything. Like I think that's, 
I think already it looks similar to how some of my analog work looks, but then even as I've analyzed older work that I've done, I think my eye, I guess, for color has been similar, but I think just the characteristics of digital and film is kind of like what make it what it is. Cause I've even scrolled back all the way on my Instagram and I look at my, my like levels of like contrast and like the way that I see the photos are like basically get them to the final thing um, with even just like a lot of the digital work. I'm like, oh, okay. Like I was already kind of trending in this direction, but it's just, it's funny to even think about because you know, what came first in terms of photography, it was film. And mm-hmm. then digital was created after that, you know, Fuji's film emulations you know, trying to achieve like the same looks, light room, the opposite of the dark room, right? So it's like, it's all, all like a playoff, you know, each other or whatever. And, you know, they both have their limitations. So I've just been getting more familiar with the X-T3, you know, from a video side and uh, photography. And it's been a lot of joy to basically be able to pick up the camera and know that I still have more frames that I can use. Like it's not limited. Yeah. Um, in that in that matter so i'm looking forward to just continuing to learn more and just trying to like balance it out i think film has taught me more like as a photographer or it's kind of forced me um to think about things a little bit more in terms of like settings and lighting Mm -hmm. and just like my understanding of like that the exposure triangle just like how i don't know just it just forces you in a way like it sounds so cliche but just kind of being in a scene and you're not readily able to see you know what you shot but you have to think back on like okay i shot it this way like i may have to do it this way next time or whatever yeah i I find um whenever i've shot film and it has admittedly been a long time since i've shot film but it feels like it's a reminder that photography is the study of light and it's it opens you into really searching for that light and getting an understanding of what the light is doing before you've even done anything on the camera it's how is this light appearing how do i work with this light um which is uh yeah tricky um especially when you're out and about doing stuff in urban environments and i know you do a lot of your shoots uh in person on location and other things but you've also done some studio work and even just recently you posted um some studio stuff which is kind of cool do you do you see yourself working more in a studio i mean obviously with portraiture and other things that's like a a huge direction or do you prefer the location-based stuff i prefer location-based 100 percent. i think doing more stuff in studio is just another way for me to further my ability as a photographer um and i think just my curiosity just diving into it more i feel like this is my thing i'm like a jack of all trades like master of none i don't know if the master of none i mean i don't know if i'll ever reach a level of mastery that kind of sounds boring to me like i would just want to continue (laughs) learning and just diving in like where i can um i think another thing too that kind of forces you into the studio is weather um here in seattle it's rainy and gray like most of the year and that day where those photos that were just up we um We basically, we were supposed to be on location, but we shifted inside. But because I have the ability to work inside a studio, like, let's, let's go for it. Let's do it. And then I think even down the line, doing more commercial work, like, because I have that under my belt, like, I feel confident enough to do it. Learning more about lighting over the last two years, kind of because of film, I think has improved my ability for filmmaking and then just digital photography too, as well. And just learning how to control lighting, learning what practical lighting is behind mm-hmm. me here. <laughs> yeah. Like shooting from the shadow side or lighting things to where you can't actually even tell that it's lit or things like that. Um, yeah. So it's just it's just another thing. I, I do enjoy it, but I would say the people that you end up taking photos with it takes a different type of person to be in studio versus Mm -hmm. like on location as far as like who's in front of the lens, because it's more so geared towards a lot of like more body movement, 
um, rather than interacting with like the location. It's like, okay, you have a backdrop, but it's like, you know, what is your, like, how fluid you, how fluid are you with movement? Are you comfortable enough getting in different type of positions? And yeah, just kind of like, it seems like it can be very one dimensional as far as like what you can do. Cause I feel like on location, there's, there's so many different things you can do, especially just interacting with the environment. So yeah, it's been like a lot of fun to get more into that working with strobes, um, continuous lighting. I think it's just a good, good, um, good tool to have in the toolbox. Yeah, definitely. No, I think, uh, lighting, um, has been like a, a huge focus of mine as well. Uh, probably more so on video stuff. I'm, I'm still very much not using uh, external lighting in my photography. I, I love natural light and, and working with the limitations of it. But understanding the way that the natural light falls into an environment and, and playing to that um, is definitely something the last few years I've really tried to focus more on. Um, but yeah, it, mentioning your setup with the practical lighting, uh, I always think you've got like one of the smoothest <laughs> setups. Um, it's just super cool, man. Yeah. Um, this is a... This is probably a good time to uh, kind of uh, round out a lot of things, by the way. But I just want to open up into the chat if people have got some questions um, that uh, they want to fire our way. We can take a moment to, to monitor those um, and discuss some things. But in the meantime, uh, whilst you're thinking up any questions or any things that you want to add in, um, I just want to talk about the, the film process. So you mentioned about um, when you're shooting digital, you're also, you know, kind of, shutter happy you can fire off yeah. loads of shots you don't have to worry too much but obviously with film you have limitations on your numbers and the amount of shoots that you did in london and i yeah. can only imagine what you'll do in future things yeah how does it come for like budgeting for all of that film processing and carrying all of that film and going through customs and yeah. storing it in the fridge like you must have an <laughs> external fridge just for film and i have it <laughs> i have it all in my fridge here i yeah. think i have right now I just ordered groceries or I just got groceries the other day, but I think right now I have way more film than I do have food. And it's just like at the bottom, nice. but it's funny because there was like a time where I, I did like kind of store it. And then I was just buying it whenever I needed it, but it made it hard in some certain situations because like, Oh, I wanted to shoot this type of film, but I didn't have it, but I wasn't able to get to the store in time. I was like, okay, that I can't, I don't want that to ever happen again. So, I mean, as far as budgeting, to be honest, I don't really think about it a whole lot. I just, I just like, okay, this is like how much I spent. Like, okay, obviously I know I have a paycheck coming like every week. And I know if I work this amount of hours, I'll get this or this, I'll get that. But then like, I have side hustles too, as well. Like I actually will drive DoorDash, like and deliver food and I'll like make extra money like that. So whatever hustle that I need to put into like afford what I want to do, like I'm going to do it like over the last seven, eight weeks, I've been like working overtime, except for like the last over, except for the last three weeks, I've been on like a break. I was working like 60 hours. So I'm like, yeah. okay, the money's like coming in, but it's definitely something that can be uh, a bit costly. But for a long while I was like scanning film at home and that was like cutting the cost in half. But then um, more recently, I'd say like in the last few months, I've been sending my film to the lab to not only get developed, but get scanned to as well, just more from a time standpoint. Um, and I think it for me right now, it is, I'd rather have more time so I can like pay the cost and basically the cost that I would pay to get it scanned in, I can make that am amount of money in a shorter amount of time than I would spend processing the film myself like if that mm. makes sense scanning it so you know it does come a bit costly but it's not like i'm not out shooting every day um you're, like a roll you're of offsetting it with all of the extra work and and time yeah. and energy they're putting in so it's you're, you're spending money to make money as well essentially yeah that's that's the thing and it's just like well you know if you upgrade a camera body like every two years or whatever and if you just if you're not selling any of the cameras or maybe you do it's like, okay, maybe instead of like a cost coming over a length of time, it just comes at that one time, you know, mm. when you make that purchase. So, yeah. Yeah. There's a, there's a question here um, asking specifically about Tokyo. Um, so uh, with relation to the type of work that you've done in London and uh, the London project, yeah. what 
plans or ideas you have because I know we've spoken <laughs> about being in Japan at the same time and I'm hoping we can make it happen. One um, day, one day. The Tokyo Project? Anything, anything <laughs> on your mind for that? Uh, I would love to, man. I would love to. Like, I have so much like vacation and paid time off and I'm just waiting for the day that we can just do it all again um when that time comes I think yeah I would definitely love to to shoot another project whether it be there I feel like I may end up doing something like in Berlin because Berlin was like another city that I really connected with a lot too when I was in Japan it was it was 2017 so it was only like a year after I'd really gotten into photography and I actually have a bunch of photos that I shot and I don't think there there's only a few photos like online um Mm. that I've done but I would like in some way or fashion, even just in present day to take what I did and make like a video essay or something about it. Because yeah. even in the making photos at home video, like I showed some of the footage that I shot like in, in Tokyo and uh, in Kyoto as well. I think there may have been in there, but just in Japan in general. And I think at the time, like I didn't really, like I knew what I was doing, but I didn't. <laughs> so yeah. it was just like, with the, the b-roll you got I, yeah. from that video is just incredible and I've, I've just put it on the screen now because it's it sums up uh how i think you interpret travel um it just you know you're you're capturing the scenes the way that you see it and you're taking the time to reflect on it but yeah. the thing that really stuck out to me is the fact that you filmed so much of this without really knowing what it was that you were doing and yet it's still usable you you managed to work with it after you yeah processed it without really knowing what the direction was originally and you've gone back yeah. to me you said this was what 2017 yeah like that was three four years ago that. um and it's quality footage really great and it's just it's not gone to waste because you've had a vision for it you knew you had that gut feeling when you filmed it um yeah. you knew that there was something great to be had with it you just maybe didn't know what it was yet and you've taken the time to reflect on it um, yeah. and i think that's that's a huge lesson for so many people of just taking your instinct and running with it just maybe not running with it immediately yeah <laughs> you might have to return back to it and um and come come away with something but yeah, yeah. the the footage from that video is was so great yeah i think one thing too about going to places to film and and you know being a creative person it's like I always think it's like oh once i get back like i'm better this time like i'm gonna sh- i'm gonna do it so much better than i did the last time and then it's just kind of like a i don't know it feels like a I don't want to call it a race, but just like every time is just like a refinement. I think over time, though, what definitely has improved is my ability to do color, um, color grading. That is, I feel like that was one of the hardest things to kind of um, get a hold of. I think more mm-hmm. so on the video side, uh, because at the time, like when I first got into Final Cut, it, it wasn't as, um, I guess, advanced in terms of what you can do with color with certain sliders and things like that, understanding things is, uh, as far as like the RG, uh, RGB parade or like the, um, the loop, I can't remember Lumetri- the other like thing. the, the scopes yeah. and the wave scopes. Forms yeah, and, yeah. Under- understanding the scopes and the waveforms and just like all of that technical ability and yeah, just like understanding that the 180 degree shutter rule. Like I knew that one very early on, but then like I went away from it. Like I used mm-hmm. to film with like NDs all the time. And then like I stopped for whatever reason. And then I was yep. like, okay, that's stupid. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, I need to go back. I need to go back. But, yeah. yeah you, you're definitely um, efficient uh, in the, I guess the recycling bin of footage, uh, the ability to to hold on to it and know that there's, there's value in it. Yeah. Uh, there's another question in here of, um, uh, from Carl, another longtime viewer, actually. Uh, Vince, when you're taking shots and making films, how do you judge that you're going in the right direction? Is it you judging the work or is it people's reaction to your work that directs your work? Hmm. Yeah, I'm actually reading the question here too, thinking about this. Um, I think how I judge I'm going in the right direction is like how I feel as uh, a creative. Mm. Um yeah, I think yeah, just I if I feel good about it, then that's 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 like good enough it's for me. Gut instinct. Um, that is exactly what the whole art in the heart is. It's uh making things because you you have a passion and a desire to make exactly. it. You're not necessarily doing it for likes, you're not necessarily doing it for exposure, you're probably not doing it for money. It's just doing it because you just have this raw passion to want to create and to share that creativity. Um Exactly. 
I think that's that's why I enjoy seeing your work and why I enjoy talking creatively with you yeah. because you you do have that just um I don't know that unquestionable love towards creativity you've got such a vision on things and yeah it Thank may you. not be able to write it down immediately but you can return to it four years later and make something amazing from it you just know it's there um, yeah just get a, out there and make skill the to work. have just get out there and make the work i just i'm not really attached to or not i don't even say that i'm not attached to the end result as far as how it's receive, received received uh, once i put it out because I was just writing this last night and I know you said this before Joe about creating for the audience of one, like it sounds very like selfish, but it's like everything I've done on my channel, it's been for me. It's just like, mm. as like a viewer and I appreciate everybody that watches what I do It's just like, you might benefit, but like I did it for me. Like it's, you know, when what I'm you're, saying? Yeah. when you're vlogging actually. Um, and it was, it was very noticeable when in the recent one where you're wearing a mask and you're, you're outside hearing you talk through it. It honestly sounds like you are making a memo to yourself. You're, oh, you're leaving these notes. It's like we're inside Vince's head and we're just hearing your thoughts as you're capturing the shot. Yeah. And, um, you know, you're walking around and you're like, oh yeah, so, you know, I've got to roll that on. And, uh, what's my battery doing? And at some point I just feel like you're going to say like, ah, oh, what have I got in the fridge? What am I having for dinner? You know, yeah. it's probably Ilford. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, it's just like a, it's just like a stream of consciousness. And I think going back to just like how communicating through like a vlogs and video and talking and stuff, it's just like, it's how I communicate. I'm very much, I feel like there's a lot of things that go on in my head. And like, I feel like I have a bit of maybe ADHD, not like clinically diagnosed, but creativity is like the focus like i don't know it's it's one of those things that i've had where i've just been able to kind of like lock in and, and mm. go from there yeah uh, there's another question in here um how do you get inspired for your shoots do the ideas just pop randomly in your head um or is it based on the things that you see in real life uh, that give you ideas i know you mentioned the other day that uh yeah was it last night or something you said um you just had this idea and you just went with it the following day is that what you're mentioning earlier Oh yeah, 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 yeah. So, um, it's like a, com I think it's a combination of both, uh, things just popping up in my head and, and seeing things. But I, I said this like a long time ago, I was like, you know, I think I may have tweeted it out, but I was like, you know, our, our, our thoughts, or am I even saying that right? Are our thoughts even like our own? Because we take in so much, right? Like subconsciously, you know, through music, through media, content whatever like you may have had something planted like a long time ago but then maybe it just like it sparked back up mm. you've just so, curated the journey through yeah the museum of life so it's just like i don't know i just feel like my experiences just give me inspiration i feel like right now just talking this is like has me inspiration to be like okay take a look at you know some things that i've done creatively i'll write some stuff down too um, to kind of like keep track, like an inbox of ideas and stuff. Um, but yeah, I mean, if it's like for a portrait or like a fashion shoot and stuff, sometimes like I'll create mood boards for that to kind of have the direction. Um, sometimes I don't. Sometimes it's more of like an impromptu thing. Like, okay, like I've I've styled stuff too as well, like myself, shoots I've done. So having an eye even for that um even if we don't necessarily like have a plan we'll be like okay yeah that shoot actually the one that's on the screen right now um like the model they brought clothes but I was actually the person that picked the clothes out and was like they were like looking at me they're like Vince like what do you think I said okay boom 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 let me move this around this and that and then the locations and everything just happened to work as far as like color palette and stuff too. So I think a lot about colors and things. Yeah, that one that's on the screen too, like that's actually my jacket. So I have like a lot of clothes and stuff too. And I think nice. um, that what I shoot, like it works for that. But yeah, I think that's a little bit of that. Yeah. Nice. All right, dude. Um, I think this, is, uh, this has been a very... Um, inspiring chat and uh as much as we had some technical difficulties at the start i think uh this has kind of come around to the the 45 minute um idea that i had of these these streams um so i want to thank uh the people who have um who have joined us in the chat uh for all your 
great questions and and uh, all the extra discussion. Vince, I know uh, this is technically your lunch break back in Seattle, so yeah. I don't want to hold <laughs> no, you it's all good. hold you on your time <laughs> for too long. Um, but yeah, just any uh, any closing uh, thoughts that you may have, um, yeah. you know, for the year ahead and, and any plans. There's been a, a question in the chat about the London Project as a book. Yeah. Um, so the London Project, as far as like a book, it won't be a book, but I do at some point want to put a zine together. I do want to do a um, documentary on it. I'm not sure the format of how I want to do it just yet. Um, but that'll come at some point. I'm not necessarily pressed or rushed to do it. It'll just happen when it does. Um, I think it, I want it to be something that I just give to people, um, and say like, Hey, this is like what I made. Like, I want you to have this type of deal. Um, and not even really like promo it too much. I'll just, you know, just create it and make it and put it out. Just just gift it out. Um, you know, as far as this year, the biggest thing is just, just taking action, uh, having owned the XT3 now, since I think it was like October of last year, I'm really looking forward to doing YouTube without the limitation of not owning a camera. That's the funny thing. 2020, everything that I did, I just, if it was shot in that year outside of the London stuff, I would just rent a camera. So not having that limitation, I feel like now what I'm running into is like, I don't, I'm feeling like I don't have enough time to execute all the things that I want to do. And I have so many ideas and things written down and kind of like a schedule and a little bit of discipline behind what I'm doing. It's just like, I just want to get to all of it now. So just keeping the patience, uh, just keep working, um, continuing to connect with people too, as well. And uh, yeah, just seeing where, where everything is going to go. Um, you know, appreciate everybody for joining and, you know, dropping in some questions and stuff like that. Uh, I know obviously we didn't answer like all of them, but if it's something you want to follow up uh, with me on, just shoot me a um, DM on Instagram. I like try my best to reply to everything and maybe we can have a little bit of a chat, but this has been great. You know, obviously haven't watched your channel for so long, Joe. And actually I think this, yeah, this is the second time that I've been on. If you guys go back and check out the the Seattle to Portland uh, travel photography vlog, um, you'll see me in there a little, little cameo, but uh, yeah. Yeah, so this has been fun. Uh, always a joy to sit down and chat. And yeah, I look forward to seeing you again in real life one day, <laughs> yeah, dude. sometime, hopefully. Uh, uh, travel. Soon. It's coming back, it's <laughs> we'll coming back soon. It's, it's eating me alive, not being able to uh, to go out and do things. We're still in lockdown in the UK, but that's yeah. that's lifting soon and, and some other things. Uh, so I'm feeling optimistic and positive, but um yeah so aside from the technical difficulties earlier with the stream hopefully it's it sounded all good and it's been uh great i can go and trim some things and you can always rewatch it again later uh if you yeah. just wanted to hear some of the um extra thoughts and see some of vince's fantastic work again uh, make sure you go and check him out on youtube uh, i believe there's a link in the description uh if not there'll be a link there in a moment yeah. and um go and subscribe to vince's channel uh share some love on the videos and his instagram he's got some fantastic work and uh, Vince, I can't wait to uh, to get inspired by your next piece. Yeah, thank so you. thanks for joining. And uh, yeah. thanks to the audience as well for joining as well. And we'll catch you again soon. All right. See you, everyone. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs> Sick. Okay. Amazing, man.